Yes, indeed. Here we are, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We've got Brad, we've got Jason G. Bush and me. Jay is out. He is mourning the fact that the Panthers have cut Baker Mayfield. <laughs> That's why Jay couldn't make it today. He was too depressed. Hiding under the covers. And I'll tell you something, guys. We'll get into the Browns' victory in just a minute. But we got to say, oh, you hold know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. I got to do this. Yeah, please. Everybody. What's happening? Moment of silence for Baker Mayfield's career. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Baker got traded to the Panthers, there were a number of Browns fans, G, who said they were becoming Panthers fans. Remember those people? Uh, yeah, all them. Now they're going to be fans of the waiver wire because he <laughs> is cut. He's going to the waiver wire. And I love all these tweets from all these geniuses. Going to San Francisco. Maybe he will go to San Francisco. I don't know. As if he's the answer with Jimmy G gone. Baker Mayfield is no good. He has not been good. No. Um, add that to another one. Um, there's people in this town um, that was just so enamored and loved him to death and his moxie and his determination and it was the shoulder, bro, all of that. That don't get you no wins, bro. Now, in fairness, he did ask for his release and the right. Panthers are happy to oblige. Right. So it's not like they just... He did ask for it. Just right. want that. But that's like that, according to Jeremy Fowler, right? Is that who I, it was? That's correct. But Fowler. they didn't think he, that's because they didn't think he was any good. They would have cut him. Right. They thought he was any good. I mean, I've been right. divorced once. Just because I asked for the divorce, don't mean my wife wanted to stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't that's like right. I had no options. She was like, "No, I'm right. cool. I'm really cool with that." Cool. I'm telling you, he should be a high draft pick in the CFL. Uh, the XFL, you go, you go. All right, the World League of American Football. He'll be on Big Noon Kickoff in three years. We know it. Let's get on to the Browns. Let's go on to the Browns. Yeah. Right, you go, go to the USFL route now. More quarterback news. Josh Dobbs signed with the Lions right now. As of the last three minutes, he's now on their practice squad. I, I didn't even realize the Browns had officially cut him. I thought they, they had. Well, you've been for that. Squad. Yeah, I thought they yeah. cut, cut him, but I week. like. I didn't even know why they released him. I like. This is not an NFL quarterback. That's why they released him. That's true. There you go. That's true. Come on now. So all right. So stop playing with. <laughs> so Baker's cut. I'd love to laugh about that for two hours. Of course, in typical Browns fans paranoia, I already got 10 tweets. He's going to go to the Niners and they're going to win the Super Bowl. Shut the hell up. The Niners ain't winning crap. And if they do, it's not because of Baker Mayfield. It's going to be because of some dope they drafted in the last pick of the seventh round. All right, guys. The, speaking of dopey quarterbacks, I don't know. I guess Deshaun Watson's not a dope. He's done some dopey things. And he played like crapola yesterday. But... The Browns still won the game. How do you score 27 points when your quarterback plays about as awfully as it can? You play the Houston Texans. That's how. It was a weird game, guys. You had the Browns score 14 points on defense. They scored seven points on special teams. Yeah. And they scored, what, six points? Two field goals. Two, Two field, field goals. goals. On offense. Their offense was outscored by Houston's offense, 12-6. If you're keeping score. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, garbage to that garbage time touchdown by Nico Collins. Put him, uh, put put him, him over the, the top. Put him over the top. It was a bizarre game. <laughs> yes. But in the end, G, you start us off here. The Browns got a victory. You know, first and foremost, I want to send a shout-out to the Kool-Aid gang. We still in it. Don't get it twisted. That 5-7. and seven, <laughs> Listen, that's two in a row if you count at home. The Kool-Aid gang is still in the building. But I will say this. Um, that Kool-Aid was warm, um, and we didn't have no ice cubes. Yeah, the cubes in it. There were no cubes in it. And, and, and no sugar. And, and we ran out, limited sugar. And we ran out of sugar, so we started using lemon Splendor. juice and honey. It just, it just did not taste the way I was on thinking there. Boy, that <laughs> – but I will say – there's a couple of things um, yeah, where I looked it. at it. Get to it. I said, man, <laughs> he he was skipping the rock to people. I thought he was playing rugby. Um, <laughs> he he did not look comfortable in the pocket, which is to be expected. I, I told people, I was sitting there last week and said, listen, there might be an opportunity where usually he's a guy that can move his feet, look downfield, and still guide and, and kind of feel the pressure on, 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 without looking at it. You know, that's why they do those those drills where they hit them with the brooms and they throw stuff around. Yeah. But they want you to move your feet and keep your eyes downfield. He looked like your average mobile quarterback who, if something happens, I'm rolling out the pocket. If something happens, I'm looking to tuck and run. And I, I think the game was just really fast for him. Um, hopefully, uh, like most coaches say, the best time or most improvement you see is from week one to week two. Obviously, this is, you know, week, I don't know, seven – what 14 or something for everybody else. Yep. But for him, you know, this is week two. Yeah. So you just hope he does what Jacoby Brissett did. Look progressively yeah. better after his first start. Jason, uh, some, you know, 
Every once in a while, you'll see a car. It's a little rusty. Yeah, a little yeah. big. There you go. Right. There's, there's, that a, there's a little bit of rust, but uh, the Deshaun Watson car was uh, covered in rust. I wrote it wasn't rust. That was rigor mortis. Yeah, it was ugly. We saw. It was, it was. But listen, okay, let's start with the positives, right? Yeah. Jacoby Brissett looked unplayable against Carolina yep. in week one. And look how much better he got with a few more reps. Sure, of course. Looked significantly better in week two, and then on and on and on and on and on. So, you know, Deshaun didn't even have – he had a little bit of a training camp in preseason, but that was a long time ago. He long had three time. practices last week. That's it. That's it. Three. So, you know, with more practice time this week, you would hope next week. I mean, l- listen, obviously they have to be a lot better next week. G nailed it and everything that he said. He was skipping passes. He never looked comfortable in the pocket. The interception was awful. He never saw the safety, and the, the safety was just sitting on the route. I thought he had DPJ on a crossing route. If he could have held on to it for another second or two, he didn't have the time. There's a guy in his face on that. Uh, there's the play there. Is that the, that's the pick. Yeah. He didn't yeah. see it. He didn't so, see it. Yeah, you never saw, he saw it. So yeah. that's the type of things that you would hope would get cleaned up with, with reps. I can tell you, I was in the locker room after the game. Nobody was concerned. Mm-hmm. Everyone kind of agreed and sort of grimaced like, yeah, that was really bad. But nobody was concerned long term. Everyone still is fully confident that he is going to be the guy that we saw in Houston. And I had one player tell me, like, listen, even if it doesn't happen this year, like, we need to stop. Gee, I love you. We need to stop with the playoffs and the six and all. It's I, I'm not even in that game. It is not. It is not happening. And and I, I was talking to one player in particular after the game. It's like even if it's not you know playoffs this year, it's all about getting him ready so that next year there are no excuses and from day one this team's ready to go. By the way, by the way, even if the Browns do win out, which I don't think they here. will, go ahead. Uh, they still. Don't have a. It's still not a lock that they're going to make the playoffs, even if they win out, because they don't have tiebreakers over anybody but Cincinnati right now. I heard you say you thought the 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 wild card was the best path. I think they have no shot at the wild card. I I think the division is their only path. I don't even think that's a very. The only reason I say that is because the Bengals and Ravens already have eight wins. Yeah, I know. Right, and so. You know, now if Lamar misses the rest of the season, the Ravens could go one and four. Oh yeah, but. But they're still playing a soft schedule. And they still uh, got to catch the Bengals. And they still got to catch the Bengals. Now, but uh, but Brad, did you see any positives well, from Watson? Well, well, or? Yeah, well Go first, ahead. I'm going to get my money off here, right? This mm-hmm. is, you're welcome to keep it real radio. This yeah. is what this is about to be. <laughs> now, this dude's been out for, the shot has been out 700 days. Mm-hmm. And I like, and people's like thinking that he was going to walk back in here and roll out. He looked like a dude that been out 700 days. Yeah, right? he did. And then I, I thought about it yesterday. I thought about it just in, in this type of context. In football, that heat he got yesterday, people coming for your head, right? Mm-hmm. You cannot simulate that in practice. It's not happening, right? It's not happening at all, right? You got a red jersey on, or orange jersey on. Can't nobody touch you. Well, you can, the Texas was trying to touch you yesterday. This is why, and, and the way he played. I don't think surprised me at all, right? And some of it is just the mechanics. You expect him to be that bad? No, I expect your mechanics to be bad, yeah, right? Okay. Because it's like this, bull. When I'm hooping and I'm in the flow, I'm rolling. Mm-hmm. You take me out of playing basketball for six weeks, six months, I'm gonna look like garbage, right? Till I come back, mm-hmm. because it's it's some mechanics here. Because he could see it in his mind, he wasn't trying to throw them balls in the dirt. <laughs> he don't have the mechanics to throw throw yeah. it on the run like that. What I was happy about was this. He saw uh, chances, uh, one play where he saw a chance to get up the field. He ran and he took a blow mm-hmm. and he got up from it. I'm like, that's yeah. a positive sign. Yeah. Like he saw something. This is going to get better, right? It's not going to stay like this, but if you can you know, just imagine you not writing for two years and then go back. And it have sounds to write wonderful. A, and, and, and had to write a column. Could you be. As you, long as Jason's still getting could, paid, he'd could, be happy about could that. You be crystal, no. crystal, crystal point no. on. Yeah. Right? It's not. Yeah. You, it's, you, there's some repetition here. But the one thing I did see is this. <laughs> we're going to stop talking about these playoffs. <laughs> right. We're playing <laughs> for next year. That's what we're playing. That's right. That's, what we, that's why we're playing him. I had this conversation with somebody last night. They were like, he's playing because we're not playing for this year. I got to get you ready for the next. That's right. Right. This is where we are. Yeah, no doubt, guys. Listen, you can't play a worse game than Watson played. It was absolutely atrocious. He was awful. He was the lowest rated quarterback in week 13 outside of the dude from the Rams, Stafford's Hmm. replacement. Right, right, right. I didn't see Matt Ryan's numbers last night after the game because I guess he was awful, so maybe he was worse. Or outside of Baker. Well, no, for week 13 quarterbacks, he was the lowest rated outside of the backup. Yeah. And in EPA, 
he was fourth lowest all year long. We it all, was really We bad. all saw it with our eyes. It was right? worse than we he thought. He was terrible. Numbers wise. He was terrible. This will be his worst moment probably as a Browns quarterback. I There's a so. lot. Of, I don't think I think anybody like I heard there was somebody on the radio today uh, at not at my old station, but at another station saying they should have benched him for Brissett. That's, oh, right. like, that's, that's, that's the dumbest insane. thing I've that's ever heard in my ever life. Yes. You are as Brad said, he's 100 percent right. Yeah, you're hoping against hope that you can still make the playoffs it's, until you've been eliminated. You keep trying right, to make right. it. I get it. But the reality is he, you need to work him through these growing pains, rust. N- By the way, not only is it rust from 700 days, he's also playing with a new team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With a new coaching staff and, and new players. Nine. And that's not an excuse. And, I mean, it's just a factor in the situation. So he's going to have some uh, – I think even at his best this year, he won't be what he's going to be hey, next hey, year. Bull, you got to work him through can that I ask stuff. you this? Is it yeah. me or did it look like – there was no real duress in Houston. It looked like the people in Houston had moved on. From they didn't us. care. They oh. didn't care. And it was the perfect team to play. <laughs> they they play. If he played that way against any other team, Gee, they lose. Nobody. So, so I, I talk, I talk. That was more than Deshaun Watson care. jersey. I ain't talking about his family. There yeah. was more than Deshaun Watson Guys, jersey. It's going to be much worse in Cincinnati <laughs> this week. Much worse. I, I look at it like this. Sometimes when we, you, we talk about politics all the time. Polls, you might as well not even listen to polls no more. The poll people be so in, there was there's going to be a red wave uh, or Trump has no no chance to win. All of that was false. Like either way, they'd be just so convoluted. I don't mind who you talking to. And this is the thing during the whole Watson case or whatever. I felt like there were pockets of the media that were that had no pulse of what real people thought about it. And when you got there to Houston, they made it like, oh, this is going to be crazy. They, they're going to be a, a bunch of people protesting. Not only was that not the case, there was people lined up getting autographs before the game. I do think it'll be different in Cincinnati, though. Did you see the way the people, Texas the staff, fans don't the tech, the, I, I, I'll get away from the fans. Did you see how the staff and the Texans greeted him when he hit the floor? Did yeah. you see that? Oh, All the, I was like, well, of course the players don't care. The players have No, no, I'm not talking about the players. Yeah. Texas I'm talking staff. about the staff, yeah, yeah, yeah. the workers. A couple of the coaches uh, were hugging him on the field when yeah, he first came out with warm-ups. No, not I don't know surprise. why anybody would be surprised by that. Zach and I, Zach Jackson, of course, my partner with The Athletic, yeah. when we were walking to the stadium yesterday, we thought, well, let's walk through the tailgate lot and just try and get yeah. some color, some scenery, see what's – no, there was no need. There was 30 people there. I, like, I you, saw you those pictures. You could see them all. Nah, you could nah, see them nah, all Jason, through the fence. You remember when LeBron walked in here the first day, you better stand over there like this in the corner. With your head, I don't yeah, see nothing. Yeah. But yeah. I can't blame the Texans fans. Their team is an all-time like one of these, like the Browns were in twenty six. It is an all-time year bad been, team. Third year in a row, they've been terrible. It's not like you know yeah. this. this yeah. is you know this. They're is horrible. One in thirty-one bad is what yeah. they're going through right It'll now. It'll be worse when he plays. They've got three more road games against teams that are at least uh, certainly Cincinnati. They're playing at Washington, yeah. right? So and Pittsburgh's going to really like right. It. The, of course, the in these situations, yeah. it's going to be a little crazier. You know. Who knows what affected him? I, you know, yeah. he may have been feeling the pressure of the contract. Yeah. The pre- all these things oh, played yeah. a role. It's going to get better. I have, I, I think you'd be foolish to change your opinion long term on Deshaun Watson yeah. and Iota based on this one game, as bad as it was. Go back, go back to this. Cause I want to, I want to make sure we tap on this, right? Yeah. Some people in your profession. Oh boy! After that game. Now, he's already come out and said, listen, I just want to talk about football here, right? And so they asked him a question after the game. Do you have any remorse, right? Yeah. So he comes back, gives him a line, well, I'm not going to talk about that. I want to just talk about the game, right? I told you last week, there's people in your profession, right, that don't care. They're just straight smokes. That's all they are, right? They are. I'll give you a little bit of context when you're done. Go ahead. And I was like this. I was like, he just answered the question that he wasn't going to answer the question. Then somebody came. 10 seconds later and followed up with the same question, just rephrased it. Same person. It was, and I'll tell you who it was. That was Jenny Vrentis, the reporter from Sports Illustrated, who wrote the, I'm sorry, actually she's with us now. She's not with us. She's with New York mm-hmm. Times. And she wrote the original story on all of the women. And so that's why, and she spoke to a couple of the uh, accusers prior to the game. And, and, and she was the one. And I, you know what? I thought, this was her chance to see him, obviously, in that environment. Go ahead and ask the question. Well, let me follow you around for a few days and figure out what you did, because you've done something, too. Trust me and but, believe me. But you have. The right? only, well, again, 
she's the reporter who broke a major part of the story in the first place. That was her opportunity to see Deshaun. She wanted to see if he was going to say he was remorseful. He avoided the question. She gave him a second chance. I, don't, I personally don't have a problem with her asking. I don't have a problem with him saying he wasn't going to talk I about agree. it. I agree. I don't have a problem with it either. Th this is what I have a problem with, right? Yeah. Aside from the facts, I don't know the facts. I just know what's out here. Yeah. Now, this is why this is why I fault the Browns at, right? Because what, what should have occurred was he should have said, okay, the rule is you have to be made available after the game, right? Okay, I'll make myself available under these conditions, right? The day that you ask me a question outside of these conditions, I'm leaving, right? And the Browns, this has not occurred. To, for the life of me, I don't know why this I just not don't, occurred. I don't think it was a big deal, honestly. I don't, like, well, she yeah. asked it. He said he wasn't going to comment, and that's well, yeah, it. But I said, well, this is going to go on every freaking No, I, I don't think, think it'll, it will. It'll be really less and less and less as the weeks go by. Let's see if it goes on Cincinnati. Every other team has to deal with that. Like, when, when you have a situation like that, when Michael Vick came back, when, you know, when all these other guys Again, have had off the field well, problems. Well, well, I'm going to just say this, and yeah. I don't, don't want to get, I don't get yeah. sideways on this thing, but it always seems to occur to people of color. It always does, right? I don't see him chasing Britt Favre now. Well, I think Roethlisberger had answered quite a few of these questions. Yeah. Again, I don't see him chasing Brett Favre now. I ain't going well, back Favre's in the day. Favre's not in the public eye. I, 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 will, I will say, um, they've done it with, they've done it like years after Kobe, right? Years after Kobe, they'll say Kobe Bryant is four-time champion. Uh, Los Angeles Laker, one of the greatest 75 players of all time, but we also have to mention that he was accused of sexual assault. And you, 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 you I, like, I don't. I mean, that everybody loved Kobe, but the end, I think that was barely a footnote. But by but, the end, but but my thing is, why would you? Yeah. Why would you mention that? Like that's not a that's not a thing. He was acquitted of that. I mean, who mentioned it though? I, I don't. Gail King. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that doesn't really get mentioned. That, that Gail that. King is one of the biggest. Uh, Gail King is one of the biggest journalists yeah. so, in the game. So my, my whole thing is is this, in in, in G and our community, there's yeah. a perception out here that this is how this flows. Right. And it's more normal. I mean, it's more times than not. That's how the perception is. The second thing, and until the Browns get a handle on how they're going to run the operation here. This is going to occur because right. you're not going to stop sports. Because once somebody get a bead on it, but I think they want to. Here, let me. Fred, tell you I don't something. think it's anything to do with the Browns, though. I well, think it'll well, be. Well, no, any, no. I'm yeah. saying, look, the Browns have to give the rules of engagement here. What are we doing here, right? Because I'm going to tell you what, Bull. You know this business. Yeah. When somebody get a bead on you, they're not going away. To because somebody want the answer. You're going to answer this question. But for he's me. not. But he didn't. I think he. I personally and think so he handled it the that, right way. So I so do I. But I'm saying. That does not stop the people from saying, okay, right. I'm going to get this answer from you, right? Unless there's new allegations that come out, I really think, I, and I live in this world, I think yesterday was the last you're going to hear of that because it was already less. Thursday was a few, and he said, I'm not going to answer those. It was a handful, but not many. A lot mm -hmm. of them were football-related. Yesterday, in that environment, being back in Houston, the accuser, that we, all, we know all the – it was right. just that one, and it was three. And I don't falter at all for asking it. I think she was there to ask it. But she's not, and, and she's not going to follow him to every game and ask this. I, I really think that that line of questioning, because he's made clear he's not going to answer I mean, it. I think it ended yesterday. Let me tell you. And to the, but but to, the, to the operation yeah. and the way the Browns handled it, yeah. I actually thought they did a good job with it yesterday. Because, listen, you should have seen the room. I wish I could describe it. It was like this tiny, it's always tiny on the road. It's like this 10 by 10, 12 by 12 room, real small. And it's just packed with people. And actually, I thought the Houston media should have asked him, why did you ask for a trade? Like, none of that even came up. That wasn't even addressed. They moved on. But, but that was their chance to see him they, and to ask him. That has on. never been asked of him in Houston. That was yeah. their chance, and they, and they didn't ask they it. moved on. But, <laughs> but with the Browns, in terms of how they handled how yesterday went, I thought they did a nice job. Because normally, you're just shouting questions in a post game. And I'm not, I'm not talking about something I don't know about. Do you remember when Jordan was being accused of the gambling thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bulls snatched that right out there. Not answer the questions. It's a different time. No, but it's the way yeah. that the organization sets the rules of I, engagement. But what here. to me, if the Browns had said you can't ask that question, that's worse. Absolutely, no, not, I think it's they're worse. They're not saying that you can't ask it. Yeah, here, he's, he, a, he's he's a grown the, man. He's a grown man that has the right to say. But, Absolutely. I am not doing this. But and the if team you can't do this, but the team can't prevent you from asking. No, right, but, I'm saying, but if you do this, I'm walking right out the door. Here's what I. Here's what I would say, and I, I love your response after from everybody. 
Uh, in case you didn't know, I'm not black. Okay? I- I'm not. It may come as a surprise. Breaking for me. news. <laughs> I'm not black. white. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I, that I understand the black experience in America. I'm not going to be a phony. Okay? Um, so I, I don't know. I certainly think that racism rears its ugly head a lot more often than other people think it does. Okay? And when all the owners of football teams and most owners of large companies are white, that certainly plays a factor. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Does that mean everybody's, every rich white guy is a racist? Of course no, not of course everyone not. is. Of course not. But it's reasonable to think that some are. And at the very least, that subconsciously they're used to being around white people and things like that are going to happen. Is there racism in, in coverage in the media? Of ab- course, ab- of course ab- that's ab- a factor. Absolutely. Of course that's a factor. In my opinion, in this particular case, and I could be wrong, I think if Deshaun Watson were white, I think it would I think people that n- most of the media coverage would be the same. I, so I'm, I'm admitting I could be wrong, but I think in this particular case, the majority of the people looking for the stories, not all, but the majority, I think it would be handled the same way. I understand if you feel differently. No, I don't blame but, them for asking the question. That's what they're there to do. What I don't, what I, what I, what I take issue with from this standpoint is that it seems to me pronounced that it's just a free for all here, right? When he walks into that room, what are the rules of engagement when he walks into the room? Is it a free for all? No, that's what I was starting to explain. So what happened was. Uh, the room is packed with far more people than is usual on a road media availability. And so the way the Browns handled it was, instead of just 50 people shouting out, I'm just going to call on you. So they did control it from that perspective because if they didn't call on you, you can't get a question off. Right. And the way that they handled it, which I, I thought they did a good job with this, the first five or six questions were directed to Cleveland media because it was going to be, they knew that it was going to be about the game. Right. Mm-hmm. But you can't ignore the other half of the oh. room. So then they took a couple Houston questions and then they called on Jenny knowing full well what her question was going to be. But you have to give her that opportunity to ask that question. He's a grown man. He can handle it any way he sees sees fit. And I thought he handled it well. He answered it well. And then we moved on. And that was that. But I like the way that they handled it. They kept control of the situation so it wasn't just everyone shouting questions all at once. We got the football side of it. We got the Houston component. Jenny was able to ask her question. We went back to football, and everybody and went home. And I'll just say this. That I, I'm a guy that's been in the locker room, mm-hmm. right? And I know how it's supposed to be handled. That's not how it was supposed to be handled. I'll just tell you that. It's not how it's supposed to be handled at G. all. G. Bush, last point. Then we're going to get back to the game. We'll talk yeah. a little DPJ and some defense. Yeah. Last, so, last point on this, we'll get back to football. So, so yeah, this is, this is a, a great uh, analogy, and I want to see how many people – resonate with this if I I mean you can count me as a me I guess I'm in the media I guess I'm if they say G Bush you're gonna interview Joe Biden today get an opportunity to, to interview the president so you know I'm, I'm getting my notes prepared and all the great questions I could ask him um, are you gonna serve a second term what are your thoughts on you know uh, North Korea immigration inflation all those good good, good questions right but I get my one shot, my one opportunity to talk to him, but I ask him about sexual assault allegations that happened, I don't know, what, 10 years, 12 years ago? For me, I don't think any journalist would do that, right? Because the reason why they say they wouldn't do it is because there's a lot more relevant information that I'd like to ask you. I wouldn't waste my one question on something that I, I could, can tell I probably won't get an answer that I want, and I don't. And that answer to me is 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 not even really relevant to what I'm talking about today. Now, granted, what he's going through and Deshaun Watson is his first game back is relevant. However, after he's already done talked about it two to three days and he shut everybody else down, me as a journalist, I would try to find another creative way in order to ask a question that I felt he would literally answer because it it, it seems like you're throwing a question away. Because he's not going to answer it. So why not come with something different? All right, let's leave it there. Obviously, we could talk about this all day, but let's leave it there because we've spent time talking about Deshaun Watson and his poor performance. But ultimately, the Browns won the game. It was a weird game. The defense played well. Guys, in my opinion, uh, now, it's the NFL. It's not college. So a win is a win, right? That's all that matters 
in the in the small sense. But in the bigger picture, I'm not convinced that the Browns defense has been fixed. Hmm. I think the Texans have one of these teams that you see every five, ten years, right. like you saw with the Browns five, six years ago. It's just an, they're, they have like five good players on the whole roster. They're a horrible team. And that doesn't mean the, the Browns might not play good D against the Bengals as they did earlier in the year or the rest of the season. But I, for me, I can't read that much into what their defense did. Even though it played well, I can't read in that much into it going forward. Brad? Well, you know, I, I think yesterday game was a throwaway game. I wasn't expecting much, much, much out of the Texans, and they did not disappoint. Yeah. But Sunday... Burrow. Yes. That's, you, that, you that's going to that's that's be your test. That's yes. it. Right? That's, that's gonna, it. Because Burrow <laughs> asked Mahomes about Burrow yesterday. He was on his he was on his business yesterday. Right. So now you won't catch Cincinnati playing at a at a high clip. Right. Right. With Chase back with right. Nixon back. It's everybody here. Right. And don't forget the comment Chase said about uh, uh, Newsom and uh, and uh, Denzel early mm-hmm. in the season. So this is going to be full tilt here on this weekend. Right. So we're gonna need everybody. The D's gonna need to show up. Uh, Watson can't look like he looked yesterday. The run game can't be like it was yesterday. The offensive line of getting overpowered can't look like that. This is gonna be yeah. a game here. If you have any chance to talk about a division run here, you gotta have this game on Sunday. Jason, the defense specifically. Yeah. Do you read anything out no. of the performance against the I mean, I, I can't do much on a football field, but I could have picked that ball up and ran in the end zone <laughs> like Denzel Ward could. Easy right, money. Right? The interception by John Johnson was that was it's a like fluke he play. Did anything. Yeah, that was a fluke play. Really, yeah. he got beat on the on the route. Yeah, and the ball popped up in the air, and he just happened yeah. to be there to catch it. So, I mean, Kyle Allen's not really an NFL quarterback. He no, he's not. Terrible. The uh, the Texans' offense is terrible, and that's not to take anything away from the Browns. You did what you're supposed to do. Congratulations, gold star in the box. Like that's what you're supposed yes, to do. Absolutely, and you did it. You let this the de- the defense has let this team down so many times this year. It's so many different turns. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett was probably standing there going, "Where was this when I was yeah, out there?" Right. 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 So, yeah. so I mean, you have to factor that in the fact that Tampa Bay just cannot run the ball this year. So you, and, their and back then, is really good, but they that Damian Pierce, Pierce is Pierce really nice. good. Yeah. Tampa? Not, Pierce, Pierce, oh, Tampa. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Damian no, 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 Pierce. No, no, no. I'm going Texas. back. I'm sorry. I'm going He's back a good to player. That's well, all, all they got. Well, White was running the ball well too, and I'm the first to drive, and they, and, and they went away. They from from I'm just saying, yeah, Tampa has not all year. You're I'm right. reserving judgment on where this defense really right. stands until these next two weeks. These next two weeks, although with Lamar being out, that changes some things. Yeah. But certainly this Sunday against Cincinnati is going to tell us an awful lot about where they stand. Yeah, they did what they were supposed to do yesterday. I still don't believe they have any defensive tackles on the roster. Nope. No. And if they fix that. It will clean up a lot of the other well, issues that we've been screaming about. Kind of late to fix it now. Well, it is. I'm not even talking about this year. I'm not even talking about this year. Gee, what about you on the defense? You, you know what? I'm, this is this is a hard thing for me because I'm telling people to drink this 16 0 Kool Aid, but even if in the in a, in a small area where they would go 16 0 with the small chance, that means that the defense probably played decent. And that means there's a decent chance that they might not get rid of Joe Woods. And that hurts my soul. <laughs> I don't want no parts of that. I, if I could lose, if I could win and he could still be up out of here, I love it. But I will tell you this. I got to give credit where credit is due. I saw something very innovative. I might have skipped people's mind, but I saw some innovation. And I was like, oh, he, he might have figured something out here. When Miles Garrett... I've always thought Miles Garrett is about 285. Uh-huh. I've always thought his next evolutionary step was three technique. Miles Garrett could play tackle. Yeah, I saw him line up. And he was lining up as a stand up three technique. And at the snap of the ball on obvious pass downs, they tell him, you got a two way go. You can, you can jab here, you can come back underneath. You can hit a step back move. Just play basketball with that guy right there. Just he can't guard you. And on them plays, Miles Garrett was giving these dudes. He was just he was just unblockable. He's just giving jab steps. I'm over the top. You can't stop me. I was this play right here. 
The play right here, they showed that picture. He had gave, he had already given this dude a move. He had hit this dude in the back of the head. I'm like, this dude, is, <laughs> this is crazy. G. Bush, he pulled the Euro step on the defensive line. He pulled the Giannis Antetokounmpo Euro step through two offensive linemen. It was absurd. And he's a freak of nature athlete. It makes no sense. He does things that no other human on Mikey, earth can do. Mikey gave him the Euro. He gave him the Euro. He, he, he did. He hit him nobly. Next week, we'll show us. Is there a real? Can you have a real conversation? About yes. The playoffs? If yeah. you can, if they win next week, then we can have a nope, real conversation. Nope. Two weeks. If you, they you got, got two Baltimore weeks. Too. If you, I'm get, not. I'm not entertaining any but, nonsense yeah, playoff be, talk. But I'm saying, saying until they win if the next they beat two. the Bengals and Lamar's not playing, I think they'll they'll beat the Baltimore. law. Uh, the the law of, of exchange theory, according to G. Bush, says if the Bengals beat the Chiefs. And then you come back and you beat the Bengals at home. That to me means I just beat the Chiefs and the Bengals. No, that's not uh, how it works. That's how it works. That's not right, how it works. Six well, and zero Kool Aid works that way. Yes, yes sir. Get back to five hundred. By the way, we'll get it back to five hundred. We'll be going to OT at the end of this show, and that's exclusively for members, Mikey McNuggets.